Well, hello again, everyone out there on YouTube. I am doing a review, imagine that, uh, today with the Athern GP39-2 Phase 1 locomotive. This is in Portland and Western scheme. So this MSRP is for $269.98, but what do I always say if you watch my videos regularly? You're going to be able to find discounts at brick and mortar hobby shops and online retailers nationwide. Now, we're going to take a look at this locomotive. I love this paint scheme, actually. See what you get for that MSRP of $269.98. So let's dive in. Right, we're gonna go ahead and open this up. If your dealer's nice, he'll give you the cardboard that kind of protects it from shelf wear somewhat, but also kind of creates shelf wear at the same time. It's a double-edged sword. Anyway, inside you've got a Horizon Hobby one-year limited warranty card, Ather News Flyer. Seen, woo, seen this one for a while. Car down, car in distress. Um, GP39-2 Phase 1 Exploded Parts Diagram Shows you everything. Maybe this is what I should use to make me sound smart in the review. Another uh, limited warranty card. This one's to fill out and send in. And then you've got the actual manual. If you haven't seen a Genesis manual in a while, this is what they're looking like. It's about 10 pages long, glossy, talks about CVs. Talks about DCC and sound, talks about the functions, which goes up to F12 in this case, in the manual, and then handling and maintenance as well. And last but not least, probably the most important thing that you came to see, which was not documentation, but the locomotive, which I'm going to unbox before your very eyes. That little uh, soft plastic stuff, I forget what it's called. Oh, they got truck cradles there and get these foamy things out and get back on this so you're not seeing all my hairy arm. All right now I always pride myself in pulling things out of the box seeing how they are. Here's kind of a little situation with the handrails. They, the stanchions have popped out of the pilot holes in three locations. So we'll just pop those back in. I don't think it's the end of the world. They will pop back out though if you don't glue them. Um, they are they are a little fishy, a uh, little wiggly on you, I guess. Not fishy, but wiggly. That kind of reminds me of the early Atherin run stuff. Not a huge deal, just something to let you be aware of that was out of the box in this situation. We will look at the front. Like I said, I love this paint scheme. Uh, one of my favorites of, for just eye candy on a locomotive. It has a sand filler hatch and a grab iron on the nose here. You've got headlights, which I believe are still incandescent, but we'll just double check. You've got MU stands, I believe that's what those are because they aren't ditch lights on the front. Stanchions, safety tread on the walkways on the front, coupler cut lever, low mounted ditch lights right there. You've got uh, accessory hoses with silver tipped ends and the brake line, and the McHenry coupler with the magnetic trip pin. The handrails we already kind of talked about. You've got the handbrake, which is the old style there on the nose. Antenna stand on the roof, cab, window, sun, sage, sun, sun shades. You got windshield wipers. You've got uh, Wilhelmina written on the side. That's all clear. Portland and Western on the side. Blower housing, dustbin hatch, lift rings, antenna stand, exhaust, dynamic brake fan, rear mounted horn, radiator fans, see through detail on the top so you can see those fans with the see through grills. You got the intake grills there on the side as well that are nice. Uh, blower, blower housing is nice and says zero injuries. It's like a safety slogan. Fuel tank is nice. You got the emergency shutoff valve, sight glass, truck details nice. Safety tread on the walkways. This angle here shows that there's a little wave in the handrails this way, uh, slightly rear lights as well and it's clear to me these are uh, incandescent still i know a lot of people are waiting um for if there's going to be leds but 
just want to let you know as we roll along that those are still incandescent. Grab irons mounted on the back look straight. Um, maybe a little crookedness in one or two. Uh, low mounted ditch lights back there as well with accessory hoses. And on the other side, there's some nice separately applied detail too, like right here on the dynamic fan housing. There's a separately applied part there. It looks like a hatch. Um, all the lift rings look good to my eyeballs. So that's a good shape there. And that's what you have. So let's go ahead and get this thing in operation. Oh. Applying track power now. Soundtrack Tsunami is what's in this puppy. Check the headlight, that works. We'll check some functions. Bell. Sorry, dynamic brake was on on F4, but uh, that was the bell you just heard. F2 is the horn. F3 short horn. F4 dynamic brakes, which we just heard a little bit of. Very nice dynamic brake sound from that tsunami. F5 turns on the ditch lights. They are dim. Uh, incandescent bulbs, but golden white, obviously, so they have a nice cracked look. F6 is more effect lighting. If applicable, in this case, not seeing any more effect lighting, so I think that's it. No backlit number boards. F7 is the dimmer for the headlight. I can tell you now functions. F8 is mute. F9 is squeal release. F10 is coupler. F11 and F12 are for steam, so basically 10 functions there. We're going to go ahead and move this thing at one speed step. Oh, one, it really takes off there. Hold on just a second. That is one speed step, folks. That can be adjusted with CVs. Probably the quickest first speed step I've seen on a locomotive in a while. Two. Three, four, and five. So there you have that. I'm going to go in reverse here. Ditch lights in the back work as well, which is pretty cool if you ask me. One speed step. Slower in reverse, it looks like. Smooth. Two. Three. Probably pick up with the camera there. Four. And five. Smooth operation. Configuration variables can change how slow it's moving at one speed step. Uh, that is pretty quick out of the box. Now, I like doing pull tests with the sounds muted so you can hear the motor noise. Just don't mistake that for the noise of wheels grinding on the rail. I will help you with that. Very quiet motor. Pull test. Now you're starting to hear the, the wheels. Looks like we're going to get about 2.4 in the pull test. We're talking about 35, 36 cars. This should be able to pull regular size freight cars by itself. All right, we're checking coupler height here. Appears to be dead on to me. I'm kind of double checking the camera angle there. Dead on so far with the McHenry. And there is the front coupler there. So, all right, we're going to take the NMRA gauge, check the wheels, see if they are engaged there. They appear to be engaged 
all four wheel sets. So good job there as well. A little hard to see, but we're going to turn on the scale here. And we're going to weigh this. You've got 0.395 kilograms, 0.87 pounds, 13.8 ounces, which is what you should be able to see in your screen there. 13.9 ounces, 390 grams, 95 grams. It looks like it's bouncing around a little bit, but those are the weights. Well, that's going to do it for the Athern GP39. Dash 2, Phase 1 in Athern Genesis. Sorry. Getting a little tired, getting a little late in the evening, but overall, pretty good locomotive. Only issues I found were the uh, one speed stepping forward. Was a little quick off the, the gun there. Um, seems like maybe a configuration variable adjustment would be a need. No big deal. And the handrail issue kind of reminds me of uh, earlier runs of Athern. Uh, would probably require a dab of glue in each one to make sure your handrails don't go anywhere or just putting them back in the stanchion holes and uh, handling with care. That said, I'm going to leave you with a little run by of a short consist with this locomotive at my grade crossing. We'll see you next time right here on my channel. Take care.